Carolyn Tyler is taking the mic next. Here to introduce some shitty half-assed videos and working girls. Carolyn, this has to be a new low for you. Seriously. Like, admit it. The shifting landscape of media has reduced you to mocking a retiree and helping a hooker get some penicillin. Seriously, I mean it. Like, Dan Noyes is a media whore, so it kind of makes sense that he's here. Um, but you, it's sad. And as bloggers, we feel apparently responsible. So here's the mic, honey. Come do your thing. You know, it's a good cause, uh, St. James Infirmary, and, Woo! you know, it's something that, yeah. Woo! It's something Chris believes in. I mean, here he is, he's facing uh, an uncertain economic future. He's got a wife, two kids, he's got multiple mortgages, and still, he has money to spend on hookers. Uh -huh. you know, you know. Partly why I'm here, and, and my boss told me uh, no, no roasting. I don't, I don't think he told Dan the same thing. But, uh, well, uh, so I'm not here anyway. I, there's no roasting, no ragging, no, you know, razzing on Chris. Well, what, why would I? You know, he's what we call in the news business a GFS, a great friggin' story. Okay. And he's a story that just keeps on giving and giving and giving. I mean, Aaron talked about the time that uh, Willie Brown made the tactical error of appointing him, uh, you know, acting mayor in his absence and what happened there. He went and, you know, appointed a gazillion, uh, you know, granola crunchers. I mean, you know, that's Chris. Then he had his time, uh, as we saw, where he said he was going to drop the F-bomb at... Uh, every single meeting of the Board of Supervisors. And then uh, we have last night. It's on, like, Donkey Kong, right? So, you know, that's my favorite expression now. Uh, it's replaced, don't touch my junk. <laughs> don't touch my junk. But somebody, somebody was touching my junk, or maybe it was just a bad dream, but you know, I'm here tonight because um, it was back in the day, I was in Philly, I was coming off of a bad marriage, and I met a young, profane, but passionate housing activist. And well, you know, now in addition to uh, Jack and Grace, I have to tell you about little Lashaniqua Deshaunay Jamal. Damon. That's right, I'm sorry, Sarah, this was before your time. This, this is somebody that Diana Ross would call, uh, you know, a love child. Uh, misunderstood. You know, never quite as good. Ishmael, Jamal, Bailey. <laughs> like most kids, she enjoys watching TV. One of her favorite TV stations is SFG TV. <laughs> and one of her favorite episodes that she keeps talking about was Lenar versus Baby. <laughs> Lenar versus the Nation of Islam. <laughs> I don't know if you recall this, it was uh, getting a little teensy, weensy bit uh, tense there, the community meetings, and uh, you know, there was one community meeting where the nation decided uh, they were going to have a meeting, and Lennar was so frightened that they sent an undercover retired cop to the meeting. True story, and uh, the brothers saw that he had a... Uh, pistol. They could see the, the, the imprint of a gun. So they took him outside, they handcuffed him to a pole, and they wanted the city to do something yeah. about this. Yeah. And they went, and the person who heard their plea was that great African-American politician, Chris Daly. said at a 
meeting with the nation of Islam sitting out there. He said, yo, yo, yo. It's on my donkey call. He talked about sending, I'm quoting Chris, a white man into your house. A white man packing heat in your mother friggin' mouths. And I sat there in the press gallery, like, oh my God, Chantalita's daddy. I closed my eyes, and I thought it was Bill Clinton campaigning in a black church. A nobody. <laughs> now that he's out, I told my daughter, I just call her Dee Dee, DeAndre, DeJanae, Dee. I said, we have to give him the same message that Nikki Diaz says Meg Whitman gave her. I don't know you, and you don't know me. So this is the last time I see you. Baby, Dad. <laughs>